Welcome back. So in this video, we're doing something a little bit different. So so far we've made daft little arcade games and things like that. This one is a little bit more ambitious of a project. We're going to make some sort of RTS style games. So hopefully you can see on the screen where um, you have a castle. They've got a castle. They fight, fight orcs at you and you've got to uh, fend them off with your swordsman whilst mining gold. So you can pay for your swordsman. Um, based on sort of Warcraft 3, Age of Empires, those kind of games. That's what, sort of what I'm into. That's why I would play um, in my spare time. Nothing amazing, it's very, very basic, but we do start off with the idea of introducing some classes with P5 play, which is something we haven't done so far in these videos. So I'll just give you a little little rundown of what happens. So when it runs, it's been a little bit slow this, uh, this evening, it should pop up and we've got my little castle, and I can click on my castle and spawn some workers. Those workers, so like that, we'll go ahead, my gold here, well, mine for some gold, obviously got my two health, better as health bar really. They're mining, and this enemy castle is sending some orcs at us. I'm then going to create a barracks there, which is a bit closer to them. When I get 100 gold, I'm going to spawn a swordsman. He's a little bit small. He's going to fight. They've killed it, so you spawn another one. And then I'll spawn two. And then they have a little fight or whatever. So he's gonna go ahead and go ahead and try and get him, but he didn't get there in time. Um, and the orc killed my castle, so I lost. So that's sort of basic game we're gonna do. A little bit like stronghold graphics wise, but I've got all these sprites off open game art, except for this gold mine, which I got off Warcraft 3. So let's get into it. So you can see here I've got an example of the game, sort of that is semi-based on. So this is a guy called Grubby, um, pretty cool YouTuber in terms of Warcraft 3. I think he was ranked somewhat like top in the world at one point. Um, you can see you've sort of got the idea that you build things, you mine things for gold. It is one where you have to control the units um, individually and things like that, which is something that at this moment in time seems a bit crazy to do, but I'm pretty sure we can do that. Um, so that's maybe something we can expand upon in the future. But here's sort of an example of um, that gameplay being, uh, being done. So the first thing we're going to want to do is as usual, go on to Replit, um, make a project in P5.js, go on to P5Play, get the library to copy in, go to our HTML page. I'm going to go ahead and replace that script as normal and get rid of all of this rubbish that we don't need. Okay, so we're ready to start. So you've seen the game, you've seen the sort of thing I'm going for, what I'm going to try and do. So we're going to, have to make a bunch of variables first, as usual. So we're going to have our sort of our castle. And um, in Warcraft 3, it's called a Great Hall, so I'm just going to call it Great Hall. But obviously, play a castle makes more sense. Maybe we'll change it later on. Let's have gold as our currency. We're going to set that to start off as 100 because that's. Just a good number, isn't it? Um, now I want a variable for my workers that are going to go get my gold for me. I want one for my gold mine. I want one for... Without jumping ahead, um, I've got a lot of variables I'm going to make here. And they're going to make sense as I go ahead and use them. So I want one called build mode. Now that's going to be for whether I've clicked on a barracks button. I'm going to head and go, go ahead and make my barracks in place. Um, I'm going to need one for my actual button, so barracks button. I'll tell you what, this keyboard, it's got a mouse on it, and it's very annoying because I keep pressing it with my little finger and moving it up. Now I want left clicked equals false. This is from checking later on to check that I've done a second click. I want soldiers. Like that's going to be a group. I want my enemy's castle. I want my um, orcs, so my orcs. I want an array that's going to store my my army. But don't miss the equals off, like I just did. Now let the enemy health, let player health, and now I need some for my sword, so I'm going to. Sword image, orc image, 
gold mine image barracks image and then I went with my background as well okay um we'll load them in now just to save time so function preload now I've got these already they aren't my images I didn't make them um oof, it'd be helpful if I actually had them to hand so I'm just gonna go ahead and just grab them because it'd be awkward if I didn't have the pictures and um, so I've got so I had a bunch of different art styles that I downloaded myself um, off open game art that I didn't like some I did like some I actually took off Warcraft 3 and made them myself so I've just got them stored so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab them and load them up so let's grab those pictures and let's drag them there and you see I've got my little barracks when it loads um, a little background image, some brass, the castle image, a gold mine that's still not walking through, uh, my orc, and my swordsman. So those are all our uh, don't need that anymore. Um, our various images, and we're going to go ahead and load them in. Okay. Now I'm not going to bore you by typing it all out because you guys should by now already know how to load an image. So let's just make the code look nice. There we go. Um, so I've got a swordsman, orc, goldmine, barracks, BG, and castle. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with my goldmine. I'm going to go ahead and create it. So goldmine, that's going to be a sprite. So a new sprite. I'm going to spawn that 100, 100 pixels wise. And then I want to add some attributes to that. So I'm going to add the collider. Now, you can't move the goldmine, so I want that static. Otherwise, the orcs will throw it all over the shop. Um, dot image equals my gold mine image. We can see I've touched it with my mouse and it's moved it down, which is annoying. Uh, and then gold mine dot scale because I know that it's, the image itself is too big, so I'm just going to make it quarter the size. And then we're going to do exactly the same for all of my other uh, bits. So great hall. Equals a new sprite. Now I'm going to spawn that at 100, 200, so it's quite close to my gold mine, just like in Warcraft 3. So I'm going to have Great Hall, Great Hall, Great Hall. It's going to be exactly the same. Dot Collider. Again, I want it to be static, otherwise, it'd be a bit weird. Um, I want the image equals castle image. Go um, and I want the scale is quite big to be 0 0.3. Okay, now I'll do exactly the same thing again. For my barracks. So I'm going to put my barracks in there. Now I want that to be my barracks image like that. Um, See, I've not put, um, I don't want a position here though, because I'm going to spawn that way I put my mouse, so I can just leave that as, as nothing really. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's a new group, because I might have more than one barracks if I wanted to. Um, in Warcraft 3, you do want lots of barracks if you're going to spawn lots of stuff, but we're not going to. Um, but the option's going to be there. So, barracks button equals a new sprite. So, I want to be able to click it. So, 50, 50, and then I'm going to add a collider and some text to that, just like that. So it's all nice. So let's just run that so far and just see if it works. I'm sure there's going to be some issues probably. Nope, looks good. So I've got my castle, my barracks button, um, and my gold mine. Judge it all you want. So now I've got worker equals a new group worker dot now I could if I want to have been lazy then because I should have got some a sprite for the um for all the workers but oh well like that so we've got our workers now a couple more groups we need to have our soldiers which are gonna be a little bit weird when we come to it later on 
got lots of soldiers that should keep calling soliders that's one, one spear group as well i keep putting a dash oh, i'm doing some weird things today um it's friday so i don't know if you can tell but um and then i want soldiers dot um it's fair i don't need it that's a bit more so i can have collider dynamic what's full of physics um soldiers dot image equals sword image i think i called it soldiers dot rotation lock equals true because i don't want them to go upside down and stuff when they're hitting things and then soldiers dot scale equals 0.5 just like that now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the ox obviously that has to be ox normally i would play as an ox if i was going to play a game like this to be fair so um yeah, I'm sort of betraying them by making the bad guys this one. Um, dot image equals orc image. I think that's what I called it. Orc dot scale equals 0.5. And then orc dot rotation lock equals true. Now we do one extra thing I didn't do, which is rotate or <coughs> spare sort the image round because if you look at the picture they're facing the wrong way and they're going to be down here so they need to be looking this way so nothing too daft but that's what he's doing and then the enemy castle now so enemy castle equals a new sprite at 500 500 just so it's nice and far away like so um, and again enemy castle dot collider equals static again um what else do i need to do i need the picture and that's gonna be the same picture for now and then make it slightly bigger because it's theoretically it's closer to us so it's gonna be slightly bigger and then what i'm gonna do now is if I'm there's a lot of things that will come in different orders, I'm going to be coming backwards and forwards too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a function now that's set interval that's going to call a function called spawn enemies every five seconds. But I'm going to comment it out because I haven't made it yet. It's going to break. So I'll send the stuff in draw so it's clear. I'm going to want the background to be BG image. Now I want to put some text on there, so I'm just going to fill it in black. You can obviously change that if you want. Add fonts and things. I'm going to do text. Text size is a function. I'm going to put 35 in that, just because it's a nice, nice big size. And then I've already got some, some text already generated ready, so I'm just going to paste this in. So it's just our text and the various bits that tell us how much gold we've got and what our health's are. And there we go. So if we can just go back to our health at the top, we'll just set that to 100. And we'll set that to 100. Here you see NAN, it means not a number because at that point, it's not a number. So and there we go, we've got our goal. I could have probably put, you know, there we go. So we can see how much gold we've got. Oh, that's upsetting. And width take away 150. So there we go. See how much gold we've got as well. So let me start. Nice and easy. If my great hall, so if I'm clicking on this dot mouse dot pressed, then what I want to do is do another check and say if my gold greater than or equal to 50 let's say it's 50 pound 50 gold for a worker i'm gonna make a new worker dot sprite don't know capital p there though uh, and we're gonna do this at great hall dot x great hall dot y and then gold minus equals so gold take away and then let's say 50 gold 50 gold for our worker. So what should happen now is if I click on it, fingers crossed if there's no errors, nothing breaks. 
spawns a little circle there. And when he's gone down, I've got two workers. Okay, so that's that. So we'll get the workers moving in a bit. And we're going to say if this is the more confusing part button. So if I press this one, so dot mouse dot pressed. So if I press that button, what we're going to do is we're going to set build mode to not build mode. So what this means is if it's false, it goes true. If it goes true, it goes false. So if I click on it, I click on it again, it should take that build mode off. Um, and then if build mode is enabled, what we're going to do is we're going to make a rectangle. So I could, what I could do here actually is do as well go fill and um, 255 zero uh, 255 255 255 like 50 I'll explain what it is in a moment we'll check it works um, and we're gonna make just make a rectangle so we know where we're gonna draw our thing um, let's get mouse dot x mouse dot y and then I'll do 100 and 100 because that's gonna be the size of our barracks anyway could probably replace that with the variable and do if mouse dot Pressed and oh, and not clicked. Clicked equals true. Um. So basically, what should happen is if I click on this barracks button. So I've got mouse dot pressed. Click that. You see, I've got this little rectangle here, which is nice. Um. I could probably do as well. Um. Right. Oh. Eh. I should put it in the middle of our mouse. I hope. There we go. That's much better. So now I can see where I'm going. And you see, I click back on barracks and it's got rid of that thing showing where I'm going to build, which is good. So now I've got this done. I need to actually make the barracks. So I'm going to say else if mouse stop pressed. So I click the mouse again and clicked is true. So it means I've, I've, I've enabled that thing. And gold is greater than or equal to 100 because it's going to cost me 100 gold. We're going to make a new barracks dot sprite at mouse dot x mouse dot y 100, 100. And S like that. So we can make a nice new barracks. And then I just need to put build mode equals false. Clicked equals false. And then goal minus equals 100. So now what should happen is if I click on barracks, place it there, and my gold's gone. I've got a nice little barracks. Looking good so far, actually. I'm this is going a lot smoother than I thought, actually, considering it took me how long it took me to figure out what I was doing and decide on what I was going to do. So I need to make sure that I'm not in build mode for this now. So now, if the barracks dot mouse dot pressed and my goal is greater than or equal to 100 to buy a soldier or something like that, I'm going to spawn soldiers as a function I haven't made yet. I'm going to make a bunch of functions here that I know I need as well. Of course, the thing for what we need to do, we need the soldiers to move. So, the soldiers move. It's a good function to have. The workers need to mine. And the enemies need to move. Okay. And then a nice little thing here. If e health, so if the enemy's health is less than or equal to zero. And no, no, oh, sorry, and and their RP health is less than or equal to zero. Then we can just say for now, no loop. Um, and maybe put some text. Text game ended with by two. Hey, by two. So we go. So obviously these functions we need to go ahead and create now. So at the minute, I'm going to comment these out because I know for a fact nothing's going to work. Um, 
but our game is nicely working so far. It's looking nice, looking nice and simple. So now we need to make some functions. So we've got function workers mine. So I'm going to do a for loop, so for let w of worker, because that's what a group's called. I'm going to do w dot move towards gold mine. And a nice slow speed. And then I'm going to say if w dot overlaps my gold mine. And I'm going to do another function, so another set interval. So set interval, we're going to mine for a thousand um, every second, sorry, <laughs> not for a thousand gold. That comes now. So I'm going to do function mine. This is how we're going to get the gold. Oh, and for some reason, Spotify, I just started playing System of Down for no reason. I think it's just my game, my keyboard's got like a play function. And I'm just going to do gold plus equals 10. Um, I'm just going to check something because I'm really conscious. Whew, I thought my microphone wasn't recording then I was going to start crying. Um, so I can get rid of that. Um, okay, and then what I can do is do uncomment work as mine. So what's going to happen now is I click on this and they should be going ahead and doing some movement. Let's just try goldmine.x and goldmine.y and see if that works. No, it's not liking that. And let's have a look at that. Let's see what's going on with that. So um, it spawns them. They'll call it worker. Yep, so for every worker, move towards goldmine.x, goldmine.y, no point, not one. So what we can do now is do a little check. Um, so it should, to be honest with you, as soon as I click on your worker, Okay, so that's running that, but obviously we, we have no um, workers just yet. So then I click that, and the workers should be moving, and they're not. So let's just check that this is working. So again, just a bit, a bit of debugging in there. So now nothing should be said when the game starts, because there's nothing to talk about. There's no workers until I click. And when I click, workers move, so they should be moving. The only thing I can think of is possibly um there we go. Um so in case you didn't realise what I just did, I just changed the collider to none. Now I did a static, you can't move if you're static. Obviously you're static, you can't move. So now what should happen is they should go ahead and move towards the gold mine. And then they should start giving me some gold. Make another one. So I get myself some gold. You know, it's, you know for the first one, that's that's not too bad. So now I want function and um, spawn a soldier. Now, this is where it's going to get confusing. Because instead of normally what I do is just make a new soldier.sprite, I'm not going to do that. Do something slightly different. Do let s, just nice local variable, equals a new. Soldier. Now I'm going to do it. Um, mouse dot x, mouse dot y, because when I do it, I'm going to be spawning it. Um, on where I've just clicked, which is going to be the barracks. It's probably a bit lazy. I should spawn it at the barracks in case you had like some like a button here that you can press that spawns them. But I'm sure you can figure that out for yourself. Um, so we have spawn soldier. So then what we can do now is um. Where I've got my spawn soldier, I can do that. Now nothing's gonna work at the minute. This is where we're gonna to have to go a little bit, a little bit crazy. Because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a class. So I'm gonna make a class called soldier. 
Okay, I'm going to use my constructor like you should have done if you've done the, the JavaScript video. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my constructor and I want an in x position. So in x in y, like that. Now I'm just going to make some attributes. So I'm going to do this dot health equals 10. And this dot is a, probably this is a terrible variable name, but this dot dude just for the guy. But let's have um let's, let's call it man. This dot man equals new soldiers dot sprite in x in y like that. And now if you remember, I made an array called player army. So player army dot push, and I'm going to put this this. Which basically means the whole, the whole soldier. Now, if I was doing this properly, all of the movement and everything to do with the soldier should be inside the soldier class. Now we're going for basics. It's a little bit of a daft little game, so we're not going to do that. But it's definitely something you should do. So adding things like the attacking, the moving, all that kind of stuff. Now what I've done so to explain it is the reason why I've got a class and not just a sprite is that I want my soldiers to have some health. Okay, at this moment in time, I'd have to have a variable that tracks the health, which is fine if it's one soldier. But if you've got 50 soldiers, need 50 variables on an array, it's going to start getting relatively difficult to, to manage now. I suppose you could reference the position in the group. You can index a group and see which position that particular thing is and do it that way. It just seems to me that it should be self-contained in its own little class. So there's nothing different there, it's still going to work, it's just going to be a little bit um, a little bit weird away. Some of the things we write is going to be a little bit strange. So let's see if this works for now. So I should be able to make my dudes, and they're going to go ahead and do some mining. Once I've got enough gold, I should be able to make barracks. And once I've got 100 gold, okay. So that's looking actually really good, except for I've written solid air, not soldier. So that's working. Just a stupid little mistake by me. So I've got spawn soldier sorted. Now I want another function. So this is probably what should go inside the soldier class. I might refactor that later. But let's have soldier move. So what I'm going to do is I want to go through my army. So for um, let s h soldier of uh, it's a little case on it player army so for each thing I'm going to do s dot man to get that individual sprite object from inside it dot move towards now it's going to move towards the enemy castle to the enemy castle just like that. Now I'm just going to stop for a second because I can see in the corner, I think I've run out of this space. So I'm just going to pause the video and um, just free up some space. Okay, okay, that's sorry. <laughs> that was a bit of an awkward one. All my videos are in one place and um, unfortunately I um, didn't free up some space. So that's all sorted now. So um, I'm going to make the man move towards the enemy's castle. And then I'm going to say, what have got this in here for? Um, if the s dot man is colliding with the enemy castle, I don't say castle like that, by the way, um, then the enemy's health minus equals 0 0.1, just so it doesn't kill it too fast. Okay, then that's that, that, and that. So that's sort of move sorted. So now we need to actually spawn some enemies, which is what our interval function was earlier on. So we're going to do function spawn enemies like that. All that's going to do is just make a new orcs dot sprite at the enemy castle dot x enemy castle dot y. Take away fifty just to spawn inside it and get stuck. And another function, function to move the enemies. Which is this is probably the most complicated 
of all the functions, but it is the last one. So I promise you I'll explain as we go along. So I'm going to do for let o of ox. And we're going to make them move towards my great, my great heel, my great hall. Make them move real slow, like that. That's the first part done. And I'm going to do the same thing again. We're going to have two separate loops so it doesn't get confused. Probably could put it in one if I'm honest with you. Um, but I'm going to say if that orc is colliding with my great hall. I keep calling it a great heel. What am I doing? Um, if I've got uh, colliding with that, I'm going to take away the player's health. Like that. So I'm going to move towards, I'm going to take the health off. And then, I don't know if this is the right place to have it, if I'm honest with you. But, I should probably have a separate function really, but whilst I've got this loop here, I'm just going to add that there. I can, I can, I'm, I'm basically I'm cheating, um, if I'm honest with you. So I'm going to go and loop through S of player army. So my soldiers need to my, to my armies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the distance between them both. So because I'm looping through both of them, I can check them both at the same time, basically. So I can say if the distance between O dot Y, O, o dot X, sorry, O dot Y, and then S dot man dot X, S dot man dot Y. So because I've used class, I've got to go find the sprite inside the class, which is what's called man. Um, and if that is less than... 300, then again, it's a bit of a lazy way of doing it, but I can do O, um, o dot move towards, so the arc's going to move towards my soldiers, and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to do the opposite, like that, and then the very last thing. Before I finish this loop here, I'm going to say, um, in fact, I need to keep it in here as well. So be careful in your brackets here because it's getting a little bit messy. I'm not going to lie. Do another if statement in here. I'm going to say basically if they're overlapping each other. So if O dot overlaps S dot man. So if I'm touching the soldier. S dot health minus equals one, and then I'm just going to get rid of the orc so that you have like one health and just do that. And then if S dot health equals equals S dot man dot remove, I'm just going to get rid of it there. I suppose I should probably splice out the array as well, but we'll see if that works. Fingers crossed it does. Okay, so I've got a bracket somewhere, so let's have a look, 148. That should be there. Hope that's any error. I'm sure it will be. I'll be shocked if it does decide to work, although I think it's enjoying the amount of RAM I'm using at the minute. Um, so hopefully it loads. Couldn't have had a few issues with things taking a long time to load. I think so I'm not on a pro account on this, this Reddit account. So there we go. So hopefully some orcs should spawn. Let's get some, some mining going. So that seems to be working. Um, that's going all right. My guy has spawned. So that's good. The orcs don't seem to have spawned. And I, I can tell you exactly why. Because I'm being an idiot. I need to uncomment and uncomment here. So now I've uncommented those functions are actually going to run. So it was useful to happen, have it so your functions actually run. So let's see if it works. A little bit slow, I think the images are a bit big so it's taking a bit of a long time to load. Good time to put a loading screen as well. This. But so look, okay, so something's got, got gone awry. That's because soldiers move, it's not defined. What did I call it? Soldiers move, there we go. So 
see how we're getting on. Okay, so that spawned some workers. Hopefully an orc will spawn soon. So there we go, he's running towards my castle, he's going to start killing it. Okay, so I've taken enough money for my barracks then. So they're killing my castle, oh god. And then he's about to get beat up. But he's gone. He's going towards the nearest orcs he sees. And he's going towards the castle, he's going to go kill it for me. He takes 10 hits to die. So we'll see how well he does whilst I'm mining my gold. He's killing the castle, he's doing a good job. Obviously we can delay the orc spawning and things like that. And let's see if he, if he can do it on his own. He's killed a bunch of orcs. But he just seems to be... That's obviously where you can also time it so they can fight a bit longer. Um, and you might see, my, my dude's died. My soldier's dead. But I have got 700, well, 800 gold now. So what I can do is hopefully... So I've noticed that they aren't going to my castle. And I think that is down to um, something really daft. I think it's honestly down to. I do S dot man dot remove, but they go towards S dot man. But it's in the player army, so I think what I need to do, and this could break the whole thing. Um, I think what I need to do is do. Um, Player army dot splice. Now I need to splice. I don't think I can do it by the actual. I can't think I can just splice S. So I'll need to. Um, can I do it? Can I do just S? So what we can do is do console.log player army. Let's hope for the best. I don't think I think that's me trying to hope for the best and get something good. Um whatever that means. Because I think it's working perfectly until there's more than one soldier, I think is the issue. Because if you notice the little ox, because I think there needs to be a number splice. I think we need to say what position it is. I don't think we can just say get rid of S, but let's let's hope for the best and let's let's see if it lets me. Got it slow loading to there. Yeah I do think I need to find the position. Oh let's not let's not do that. Let's make some workers first. So they go straight to my castle so that's working fine. Doing a good job. And then I think I'm too late. I think it's gonna kill my castle first. Oh, I clicked way too fast then, hoping for the best, and it's killed my castle. Let's try again. Let's be faster. Obviously you can change all these bits, these are all really minor things. So let's start mining some gold. Obviously, you can take the whole gold thing out if you wanted to and just have it so you have two castles that fight each other. Yeah, so they go towards him, which is all good. There's a fight with them. You just seem to go to the, the newest one that spawned. Um, like that. But then, I think what happens is once he dies, they're going to go ahead and go to where they, he spawned because that's where initially it was I think anyway um, let's just check that I think I suppose I can let him kill me a little bit first I guess before I spawn everything um, let's have a little look let's make a, make a castle real quick and get sorted If it's not that, then I will pause the video if I find out what's wrong and I'll redo it. Alright, so let's
Right, there we go. This is better. Let him kill me a bit longer. There we go, they're gonna to come towards my guy. He's gonna have a scrap. Come on, kill him. <laughs> right. Um Alright, what should we do? Uh, what's the best way? Um Right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my guy to like one or two health. This is what I want to change. So let's just start again. We're doing so well as well, won't we? No errors at all. Right. Let's mine some gold. Make a barracks. So they're going towards my guy. Two of them are going to kill him. He goes back to the castle. Oh. I don't know what I was on about. It did work. Maybe I was just looking at it wrong. Because that definitely seems to be working. Okay. Apparently I'm a genius without knowing it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So despite that massive mess up at the end, the game's working. So obviously lots of things you can do here. You can have barracks, archery ranges, different types of um, guys. I've noticed that the orcs are backwards, I think, a little bit. Um, so let's obviously look at that. Hopefully it's just not daft. Orcs.mirror.x equals true. That's what it should be. Um, let's just see if that fixes that. It should be true, so I don't know why it'd be false, but it keeps disconnecting. Um, but yeah, that's a yeah. It's been it's been relatively successful, except for the length of the video. So does that fix when you spawn to look the right way now? Nope. Should just be a case of doing a nice mirror. I don't think there was to the we worked on with the video either. Um <laughs> just thinking about it now. Uh let's have a little look a little look on here just to get that just uh where we are we are actually uh Looking decent. Can I search for it? Mirror. Yep. So, if you want to flip something, you do ghost.mirror.x equals true. I think that's only for animations. Um, I mean, you can scale it. I mean, easiest things are just swap these around. I think we'll stick with that. I think it's been complicated enough. Um, so, that was an RTS style game. So, as I said, you can have archers that fire missiles. You could have it. Um, so that if the enemy's gold, if the enemy has a certain amount of gold, it can spawn, it takes it off them. That's quite easy for me to do as well. Very same process. Maybe having to say generate gold rather than gold mines. Um, what's up to you? Have it so there's like obstacles in the way that they've got to get around. Uh, and use elements to do the bits of games. It might be a case of you can use, you can put a spawn squares and that. You can build walls around. Really easy to do that. Um, and they've got to like attack the walls to get through. So you can build a bit of a wall first. Um, but honestly, the best thing that I do is I just I just sit and watch games. I sit watching games and I go, oh, that's a good idea. And I make it into a game. Um, so I've got a few more in the pipeline, but yeah, it's a bit of a different one. A bit strange, but hopefully you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and send me what you've got, because very few people do. And it's nice to see what you guys create. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.